Good morning. Ready to go for another round of <laughs> looking at the papers. My name is Felicity Ezewike and this is Off the Press. We start this morning uh, with the Guardian newspaper. Big stories. Uh, 200 billion naira investment test Ogun Lagos infrastructure. And then it has two riders. States just all for investor confidence bad roads vehicle repairs raise cost of operations investors raw charges failed infrastructure government should embrace ppe and then there's a graphic there investment profile movement in Ogun, a legal state between 2018 and 2019 that's it on your screen and just beside it, uh, you have COVID-19 cases in Nigeria by states, I presume. Uh, Lagos uh, remains the epicenter of the virus in Nigeria. The more reason we should all try to be as safe as possible. Okay, let's see other headlines. Worst child illiteracy looms in Nigeria, others over COVID-19. Virus creates $6.2 billion education spending gap in sub-Saharan Africa. Experts fear imminent surge in infant maternal mortalities. A lot of, you know, worries with this COVID-19. We are humans. We continue to do what we can. Uh, worst child illiteracy looms in Nigeria. Magu faces salami panel as senior lawyer six hits release. <laughs> A lot has been going on with the Magu case. Um, um, I understand from lawyers that he only gets to hear about all of the charges much later when he is being questioned. COVID-19 paralyzes Benue government activities. Anxiety as fresh crisis erupts in Unilag. Second wave of pandemic poses risk to oil rebound. That's a bit of business for you. Uh, let's leave the Guardian for a bit and go check out the Punch newspaper. Uh, the big one here is Ministry opening school reopening confusion. Ministry list guidelines omits resumption dates. CBN places serial loan defaulters on watch list. Nigeria foreign. Academics, others celebrate Shoinka at uh, 86. Happy birthday to Nobel Laureate Wale Shoinka. Uh, we also have NFIU submits report on Magu's Forex transactions to panel. Nigeria earned $206 billion from oil in five years. That's uh, OPEC. You'll find details on page seven of the paper. Uh, let's see what's happening uh, with the picture on the front page. Uh, underneath it, Lagos urged doctors to end strike, resume work. Um, there was a report earlier by Plus TV Africa's Mary Chinda on the situation at Oda uh, General Hospital. Uh, we saw there was uh, some level of compliance. Uh, and then on the flip side of the uh, agitation, you have the patients who are always at the tail end of such um, situation. Okay, um, I'm told I have my guests now for the program this morning. The publisher, CKN News, Chris Wandu, join us via telephone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Um, before you came on, I took a look at the Guardian newspaper. And uh, one of the issues there was 200 billion naira investment test Ogun Lagos infrastructure. And then on the Punch newspaper, uh, something that I would like quickly your perspective on it. And that school reopening confusion. Uh, the Punch says a ministry list guidelines omits resumption date. And then there are two riders to it. It says, FD says, COVID-19 won't go soon. Rules out financial help for private schools. Southwest states hold virtual meeting today, take stand on people's resumption. Um, there seems to be a whole lot of controversy um, around these issues. Let's start with your uh, view on it first. Yes. Uh, yes, there seems to be a lot of controversy that's already of schools. Uh, so as already mentioned, 
Uh, the federal government actually came up, and uh, the BPM came up with uh, a residential bill. Um, uh, of which some of the buildings you know, like Lagos State, and came up with a uh, residential and extreme. Um, just a few days ago, while we saw that, but, uh, we are currently like, ready for that. Uh, we see if um, the FG through the minute of um, uh, of education said that that will be happening, and that has thrown everything overboard. Uh, the private proprietors are fighting that it's open. Parents are fighting that it's open, and other stakeholders are fighting that it's open. But to me, I don't think there should be any controversy about this. It's if the federal government thinks that um, the things are not safe for the children for now, I think we should leave to that. We shouldn't be in a hurry to do just for the point of view. The head of our students and our students is the paramount over and above any other consideration. Um, the companies have shut down to the 2021. So um, if we're having a, a, a rise a in rise cases and uh, we are still seeing the fight uh, still rising, then I think that we should be good. And for uh, goodness sake, both of these have not been able to even put the necessary infrastructure in place to reopen our schools. So I don't think it was hard about systemic vaccine. Your thought quickly on the, um, the, the seeming disconnect. Um, I saw a report um, where private um, proprietors um, announced that the federal government says they are going to pay uh, private schools teachers uh, during this period of uh, pandemic closure of schools. And then we have this headline that's saying um, FG rules out um, financial help for private schools. Uh, your quick thought on that, really? Well, I was surprised when I had the news too. I didn't know where it was coming from. Um, no source was given. But, um, but uh, <laughs> I found that a bit funny because uh, private schools are private schools. They are private institutions. Uh, and the federal government is presenting that in terms of financial. They can't even fund it at their budget. So I was just wondering where they get money from to fund the, uh, pay the future of the private school. But there can be some palliative, um, just that they've been doing. Um, they can be some palliative, some of it, just because, rightly, uh, most of them are not in salary pandemic. There could be some palliative. They say that the private government is paying private school. I do not have to do that. Is it to pay large or to work for? Uh, that would be a very, very um, make. Um, I think there could be some level of uh, maybe meeting the two federal ministers of education and the uh, and the application of private schools so that we can meet, have a real gap between what is presently uh, what we are facing presently and the, the way forward. I don't know how government is going to be able to do that uh, because private schools. If you say that pay private schools, that means also private companies that have not been working out this while should also out of government. Um, uh, palliative and uh, payment for salary of their workers have to be very tough. Uh, tough. All right. Yeah. Uh, let, let's see other headlines here. Still on the Punch newspaper, Lagos urges doctors to end strike, resume work. And then uh, we have a cultist jailed 20 years for raping um, FU. OYE, that's um, a university graduate, I presume. Um, APC Gov's leaders meet today, plan funding for Edo Ondo polls. Um, just above that, you will be, you, you'll see uh, the story on NNPC sacked 850 refinery workers, Pengasin, Nupeng, allege, and then 35 choir doctors have tested positive for COVID-19. 3,600 rape cases recorded during lockdown. That's according uh, to a minister. Uh, which of these would you want to take on? That's that, that uh, so many stories. But look at, let's look at the, um, the doctor's strike in Lagos. Yes, doctor's strike in Lagos, strike uh, because um, that's, a very, very, that's a very disturbing one. Uh, because certainly we're having to know, uh, medical challenges across the country couple with the um, COVID-19 pandemic. And um, so Lagos State has been in the forefront of the fight against COVID-19. But um, the doctors in Lagos are complaining that they are not getting the necessary 
um, two, not only two, but also the allowances from the Lagos State Government. I know there was a meeting yesterday that was held at the Lagos State Government officials and leaders of that association, and they are trying to find a way to do uh, uh, it is a three day uh, uh, warning strike, it is not a full strike, uh, which will be ending by tomorrow. October. But I don't think that I think this able to sort of doesn't go full blown um, strike. So um, there was a release by the Lagos State Government last time that yeah, they already meeting with members of the association and that is that within the next week, and we hope that the case. All right. Um, let's take a look at the Guardian, the Nation, I beg your pardon, the Nation newspaper. And then uh, PTF, airborne transmission of coronavirus possible. This has been an ongoing conversation. Uh, now the recent official stands on it. Um, government cautions against mass gathering, electronic sharing of test results to start. And then just above the masthead, unclaimed dividends now 158.4 billion naira. Most investors, um, that's um, something for you. Unknown. Magu's office searched by detectives. Panel grills more officials. Magu didn't pay Falano 28 million. We hold senior lawyer in high esteem. That's another. Uh, one there, probably, hopefully, putting an end to uh, the uh, the proposed lawsuit on that matter. And then an update on Edo 2020, Ize Yamu or Baseki defer on campaign funds. With APC candidate, Edo will, do, will be in safe hands. And then governor's achievements in education, unprecedented. Uh, that's um, more for you on page six of the paper. Um, of course, um, Lagos decries doctor strike as insensitive. Ekiti medics justify action. Uh, these are some of the headlines. Oh, and then we have this one captured here. Um, Zinzi Mandela dies at uh, 59. That story uh, trended for a bit. Over to you, Mr. Chris Wandu. Um, let's talk about um, the PTF now taking a stance that the virus is airborne. It's possible. Yes, um, there have been uh, several investigations of the experiment that we're going And it just has been on for long. Whether it's airborne or transmitted, um, whatever. Um, but this is another revelation. I don't think that when we are looking at how this spreading and then make it transmitted, the most important for me is finding a virus for it and finding a medication uh, for it, finding drugs for it, so that we can be able to get this in the court. If you understand what I mean, um, yeah. So. Spreading um, the, the attempting more now in Nigeria and more people that are coming up. So, uh, for me, I think that, yeah, it is uh, okay. because we are able to see people, you see what is happening. People just now have resorted to using green shield instead of math. And uh, the WHO has come up with the report that we are having a lot of people um, contacting that. If you are using a face shield, you should have spread this a face mask to cover your nose. So it is um, it's getting um, a more intriguing by the day. Uh, but my personal opinion is that I think we should work upon the WHO and the regional bodies like Wahoo uh, in West Africa and another that to have some local content. Okay. Um, if we can have our own other things that can take care of too much of this issue. So okay. that uh, our people don't, we don't compete for um, the people um, for two or four and four things. All right, uh, Mr. Wandu. Um, Yes. Um, let's see what we have on the Tribune. Uh, we're almost uh, out of time. Um, all Nigerians should get tested for COVID-19 PTF. I might flip back to the nation, though. Um, already, I am doing that because we, um, on the one hand, they're saying it's uh, going to be airborne, confirmed. And then you're saying all Nigerians should 
um, get tested for COVID-19. Um, yeah. Is that a possibility where over 200 million people, uh, how do you propose um, or do you think we'll be able to achieve that? My, I, I, don't know, I don't know how they're going to achieve that. Presently, I don't think it's something more than the 500,000 or 1 million. I can't say 1 million. It's close to about 4 million. How are you going to test uh, over 200 million men? Because you have to test the kids. And they're not going to test the kids. And they're not going to take care of that. There is no need to test the kids. I'm making sure that those are tested, um, get treated. Um, but if you don't improve on the you can't test, we don't even have the capacity. We don't have the um, the testing chip for the advanced good. All right, uh, Mr. Chris Wandu. Um, unfortunately, the line is really bad. So um, we'll just say thank you very much for persevering, even with the technology challenges we've had this morning. Thank you very much, Adam. It's a pleasure. All right, we'll continue well, taking a look at the papers. Uh, we have, we're still looking at the Tribune. Uh, you heard his thought on the possibility. Um, I, I would have an opinion on that. That would be, while it is a good idea, it might be tricky to carry out uh, but fair enough to them they were thinking for all nigerians all right it gives new guidelines for schools reopening once for once government meetings virtual to further notice fg's decision on why not binding on states that's minister 35 doctors have tested positive in quara that's nma we're still with the Nigerian uh, Tribune. Uh, other headlines, Kaduna Court refuses to grant a Dickiness bail over 14-year-old Tercha. Ondo PDP aspirants, chairman, elders, raise alarm over alleged doctors, doctored delegate list. That's another one. Uh, you find details on page 22 of the paper. Uh, Fire God's World Trade Center in Abuja. Well, he's got really... Uh, the descriptive, because we had a report earlier uh, from our correspondent in Abuja um, showing officials there clearly saying it was just a minor uh, incident. But, I mean, there were videos of uh, a little bit of smoke coming out of the uh, World Trade Center in Abuja. Uh, moving on now to other headlines. Uh, a picture here alleged 70.849 billion naira NDDC contract scam. Reps want ex-commissioners, directors, contractors to appear. Uh, we've not seen the end of that matter, not by a long shot. Uh, more headlines expectedly um, in the days ahead. And then that picture there is uh, a cross-section of de-radicalized um, uh, repentant members of Boko Haram. That's a picture there. They're all fully kitted. Okay, let's see uh, what other paper we have before we wrap things up this morning. I'll take a look at the business day. All right, quickly, we'll take a look at business day while it's coming on. Uh, how Nigeria can stem its increasing poverty rates. That's a Kale. Tough war ahead to stabilize oil prices as um, shell prop producers file bankruptcies. Inside the paper, COVID-19, millions of Nigerian children at extremely high risk of dropping out of school forever. That's not a good one, that report there. That's not a good one. All right, I guess that's where we wrap things up now for Off the Press. We have uh, all the papers online, so you could go uh, catch all the details. If you want to be patriotic, you can go uh, purchase a hard copy for yourself. Thanks for watching. Plus TV Africa, more programs ahead. Do stay with us. My name is Felicity Ezewike.